From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Hey, welcome to the show today. Today, uh, my guest is actually the first guest I ever had on the show. Uh, it's Shonda Pierce. Shonda and I, oh, it's about that time of year again. We did. We are doing another movie together. This is our third movie we've made together. We made our first movie together in 2016. It's called Laughing in the Dark. And it was about uh, Shonda's estrangement from her daughter, how that affected her husband. Uh, he became an alcoholic and then literally drank himself to death. And what started out as a, a movie about a uh, behind-the-scenes look at Shonda Pierce, the Christian comedian, it really turned into another movie, How Do You Navigate Tragedy uh, in Your Christian Faith? How do you navigate that? And uh, that was Laughing in the Dark. That was 2016. Then in 2017, uh, we kind of did a continuation of that called Enough. That was in theaters as well. And, uh, you know, she never felt like she was enough for her dad, never enough of a, hu- a wife for her husband to stop drinking. Wasn't Obviously, it wasn't enough of a mom. And just kind of, you know, dealing with how this this loss of her husband, this widowhood, and how it affected her own self-esteem and self-identity. And then trying to find that identity in Christ, that we're enough because of who we are in Christ. So uh, this is our third movie. It's going to be in theaters May 7th and May 9th in two nights. That's Mother's Day week, May 7th and May 9th. It's only those two nights, and it's 7 p.m. Uh, you could go to shondamovie.com uh, for more info on how to find a theater near you and ticket info, shondamovie.com. But uh, so, you know, this is our third movie together. So anyway, without further ado, here's my interview with Shonda Pierce. Well, Shonda, it's uh, it's that time of year again. We're making another movie together. This is movie number three. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what the movie's about? The movie, you know, it's been an interesting journey because we didn't pull out excerpts of sadness, and we didn't. We're not harping on you know the abuse of a father to a daughter. We're not talking so much about the stages of grief and making it through, and what I've done to get through depression. What I still do every day to get through depression. What we're really trying to talk about is empowering people to not be afraid that when that time comes to you and someone says, don't talk about Jesus, or when someone comes up to you and says, what do you think about, you know, uh, abortion, that you will not take that breath and go, oh, dear, I don't want to offend, you know, and believe me, my goal in life is not to step out of my house and offend somebody. My goal in life is to glorify Jesus and to glorify God and what he's done for me in my life. And I think so much we have, we have, Christianity has taken a bad rap, you know, of, oh, those Christians, oh, those weirdos. And if you want to call me a weirdo all day long, I don't care. I can't help what the Bible says. Some of it's hard. There's parts of it I don't like. The whole love your enemy. It would be much more fun to go toilet paper somebody's yard. <laughs> yeah. But it's not in me. Yeah. You know, and the Bible commands me yeah. to love yeah. them. Doesn't suggest it. The Bible commands you to love people. And some people do that better than others. You know, I'll I'll give you that. But there are some ideas for your life. There's some commands for your life. There's some Please, for your life, that Jesus said this and this and this. Don't think on those things. Don't participate in those things. If you do this, I can bless this. And believe me, the blessing is going to be so much bigger than what you think you gave up for Jesus. On your Facebook page, you talk about uh, working with the Faith Coalition. Yeah, I do work. Faith Coalition. Now I get, you know, there's always this fine line of what is um, what is a conservative principle, what is a conservative principle, and what did the conservative movement, you know, um, the, let me say it this way: there's the conservative movement is a political thing. 
it's some things that we would like to see done politically, uh, physical conservative. I would like my tax dollars to go with something that I that I'm just so adamantly not against. You know, I would like to have a say in how much taxes I pay, and I pay a lot of taxes. I, but I, if I'm going to pay a lot of taxes, I'd like to have a little more say about where those dollars are going, and I'd like to have a say of where those dollars. I don't want some of those dollars to go. So there's the conservative principle. That's one thing, and I know that there are some Democrats who are physically conservative. I know wonderful Democrats who are great churchgoers and 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 believers. You know, I totally get that. So this is not a political movie. This is what happens when your world collides with what you believe the Bible says for your life. And when that happens, that's that's where the rubber meets the road. And you might lose friends. You might lose a TV show. You might lose opportunity. You might lose, friend, you know, likes on Facebook. But I promise you the reward of saying I was faithful to what God instructed in the word of God, that when I lay my head down at night and I know that I have been faithful to the Lord today, there's not a better sleep. And believe me, there's some nights I lay my head down going, I probably could have handled that a little differently or I probably was a little too flirty or I probably shouldn't have laughed at that, you know, because I am not a perfect human being. You know, newsflash, Shonda Pierce is not perfect. But what I want to be said of me when I die is she was faithful. She could have veered off the path at any time. She could have walked away from this Christian world, but she was faithful and I, And I think that should be a goal for every Christian out there, that it wasn't comfortable, but they were faithful. You know, they took a they took a hit and didn't get what they wanted to do, but they were faithful. I want to be faithful to what God's word says for my life. You are listening to the Rick Altizer show on Bot Radio. And my guest today is Shonda Pierce. And we are talking about. Uh, her new movie called Unashamed. It's going to be in theaters uh, May 7th and 9th, uh, 7 p.m. both nights. And uh, you can get more information about uh, tickets and how to see the movie uh, at a theater near you by going to shondamovie.com. So, uh, Shonda, we've made, uh, you know... Uh, Three movies now. This and this movie is kind of different from the other two movies. This is, uh, you know, number three. Yeah, it is third documentary. You know, <laughs> I'm still alive, and I have had three documentaries now. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought my life was oh, yeah. that interesting. <laughs> you know, um, and it's been a hard call. Let's let's be honest. The death of two sisters, an abusive pastor dad. Uh, making recon- reconciling with that, his death and what I went through to learn from that, uh, the loss of my husband, grief is the gift that keeps on giving. We could have explored that even more. Uh, dating, dating at my age and what culture expects of you and what you're just not going to do, you know, so you're not going to date much. You know, all of those things were great topics of discussion and things we could really explore. First of all, we've done those. We've done those. And secondly, sometimes I feel like if we keep exploring some dysfunction of my life and there is lots, I'm going to start looking really unhealthy because people are going to start going, oh, she should be getting better about that. (laughs) And some things I am better about. I wouldn't want my man back for no amount of money. I've finally found peace with knowing he is so much happier where he is. And I'm okay with that. Now, do I wish, and do I get lonely? Yeah. But now I've really made peace of going, man, he's the lucky one. You know, he's he's not dealing with the pain of, of, of you know, our what's going on with our kids. He is, he's doing, he's fishing with Peter right now, I'm convinced, you know. But um, so a lot of parts of my testimony that have been uh, very much in why I do what I do, trying to, 
navigate life and be funny and yet help people where they are and what they may have been going through. We have explored a lot of that topic. And in this movie, I really, I think we worked really hard to make the focus not about what I've been through, but make the focus about what Jesus has been through and what he's done and how he salvaged brokenness and how he instructs and guides his children to live. And when you make it about that, then you got to you got to talk to a lot of people who have, who have had to stand up for Jesus in a lot of different ways. And there's a lot of different ways we stand up for Jesus. Sometimes we don't have to talk. Sometimes it's the way that we live in standing up for Jesus. I know someone who waits tables that like she's the sweetest young woman I know and the smile on her face hitting people when they're hungry, you know, and in that just that right moment when it happens and if it happens, she's able to leave a little note on the bottom of the tape, I mean, of the ticket of their meal that says, Jesus loves you, Tina. That is her witness. That's where God's put her. Once in a while, she's had people scratch that out and not leave a tip because that interfered with her you know, what they think of Jesus. Did that make her stop waiting table? No. You just make her look for the next opportunity to get to do it. You're asking questions in this movie. Right. Which is different from, from the last two. Everybody's drank yeah, Because me. the last two movies, you know, now you're asking questions. I know. I love getting to be on the other side of the, of the microphone, you know, and asking somebody their opinion or their thought and let them take the heat for it. <laughs> <laughs> when it's dumb idea, you know. Uh-huh. I love I loved interviewing Mike Huckabee. That was that was kind of a treasure moment for me. And the Benham brothers, you know, everybody we had a chance to talk to in this movie from Jeff Allen. Man, that just blessed me. And and some comics who, you know, are are out there where the rubber meets the road and what happens when all of a sudden the day in the room turns so blue that as a Christian they you have to leave, you know. And it's not that you're being a prude or a jerk. It's just that I, if Jesus is living inside of me, I've got to be really careful where I walk Jesus into. Is this something you want to do more of? Well, I don't know about that. Where you're that. asking questions? Like a talk show? or Well, you know me. I've always got my eyes set on something that's going to help me be able to stay home more. I'm getting ready to get on a bus tonight for 35 days straight. And I'm not excited about it. I'm excited about going to work. But, you know, it's a, it takes a toll night after night after night, even though it's a fun night. We've the way what we've scripted and taken out there on the road, how, what we know works. You know, it's always good when you it's like you have a treasure and or a present that you're taking to someone. And you can't wait for them to unwrap it because, you know, they're going to love it. That's kind of how it is when you plan a show and you know that it's working and all the pieces are coming together. All the songs are working and that's kind of how we are. But no matter how wonderful it is to take that gift out there it's you're still away from home you know in your own bed and the sanity of of being in a rolling tin can for 30 days i don't care how nice the can is it's still a rolling piece of tin going down the road you know i love it i can take my dog you know but he's getting old too he used to run to get on the bus now he's just like me going really he looks back at me like we're really getting on here <laughs> So that's where you'd be interested in doing a talk show? Yeah, I think I would. I think I am. Um, there's so much, you know, the Christian field is kind of finicky. You know, um, what works in a sanctuary, even when I'm talking about spanks and sex and, you know, some of those edgy stories and jokes that I have that are rip and fun, you, you get to navigate the night with these people and they've learned to trust you. And so... If one little sound bite comes out and it was just a blurb about something I said about having sex with my husband, you know, it, in the taken out of context, it scares the church world to death. And so I think, I think there's a lot of networks out there. I'm, I'm, I guess I scare them a little bit because offers aren't pouring in. <laughs> I think I could do a good talk show. Well, I think so too. Well, you are listening to the Rick Altizer show. <clears throat> My guest is uh, Shonda Pierce. We're talking about her new movie, Unashamed, 
in theaters May 7th and 9th, two nights only, 7 p.m. And you can go to shondamovie.com for more information. So this is a weird question. Do you like your life right now? I do. I'm lonely. I'm really lonely as far as romance goes and all that, you know. And at the same time, I look around and I think, I have no idea how I'd fit a husband into this. I really don't. You're on the road for 35 days. That's a long time to be away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, w- it would be a long time to be away. If, if, even if I have a, a budding relationship right now, that's a long time. Out of sight, out of mind. I, I have been dating a fella who who knows the road life, and he's on the road a lot, you know, with a, a, another, an art, another artist. And that's kind of nice. We have dinner every now and then, and I enjoy that. And he's very understanding because this is what he does as well. Um, something like that is probably the only way it would work. Or somebody that's retired that could just travel with me would be fun. I've never had that. You know, the kids were always young and David chose to stay home and David didn't like to try. He tried it, but he just didn't like it, the road life. And, you know, I I miss having some, not, not so much that I miss having someone out there. I miss having someone to come home to. I do miss that. You know, um, I can't tell you even five years after David's death, how many times I g- grab my phone before I go to bed on the bus to get ready to call home to tell him the night was good. Or the, and that is the hardest thing in the world for me. I still come home from the airport and I get to the airport and have no one to call to say I'm home. Can you come pick me up? Or I, I walk in the door. There is no one here to ask about how your shows were or to lay in the bed at night and say, oh, man, and we, we did this and that. And yeah, there's, it, that is, that's hard, you know, to get used to. Um, but I'm adjusting. Does 35 days in a row help with that? It's just go, 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 and you don't really have much time to think about it? A little bit. You know, it's just, now we have days off on the road. We'd have to. My voice has to rest. But, um. But I I do think the busy activity of being on the road helps with the loneliness. I am more lonely after I've been home for four or five days and it's been quiet, quiet, quiet. At first, it's wonderful because I get completely peopled out. And then, you know, uh, then it's then it starts getting very quiet. So I'll call a girlfriend. We'll go to dinner or you know, see what's going on with their lives. And I do... I mean, I have a life. I have wonderful friends. Just, I mean, I am so blessed. You know, tonight before the bus leaves, I have two or three girlfriends. Hey, where are, where are you eating before the bus leaves? You know, they they genuinely care about where I'm headed. And some of them will fly out to see me this, you know, 36-day run. We've already planned how we're going to visit, you know. It's just after all that's gone, crawling it, there's no one to cuddle with and say that how your day went or to... You know, just to be quiet with. I don't have that. How is God using that in your life? He's He's certainly enough. <laughs> I'm surprised. Oh, where have I heard that before? Um, he certainly uh, sustains you through it. You know, uh, I'm not going to lie. I'd, I would love it if God would take that lonely feeling away. Um, but he doesn't always. You know, he reminds me to get busy or what is most important. Quickly, you can read the word. You can turn on the news and see people going through a tough, tough time that you're not having to face today. So he, he's quick to dis, to remind you that he's there. But, you know, if he was a cuddler, that would be even nicer. <laughs> I want to cuddle with Jesus, but that sounds a little weird, to tell you the truth. <laughs> You're listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, and my guest today is Shonda Pierce. We're talking about her uh, her life and her new movie, Unashamed, going to be in theaters May 7th and May 9th, uh, 7 p.m. each night, just for those two nights only. Uh, it's a Fathom event, and uh, you can go to shondamovie.com to get more information, tickets where you can find uh, a theater near you. Um. You know, it's interesting as you're you're telling me about this, um, I notice you're not talking about uh, being depressed. No, 
It's totally different. You know, even when you had a husband and you had a daughter, you were struggling uh, with, with that issue. I was depressed and, yeah, hiding away and all that, yeah. So, I mean, this is a... I have come a long way. You know, here's what I always know when I'm talking to my therapist or something and and, uh, and I'm still in the same a dose of antidepressant that I've been on for six years and haven't had to increase, you know. And to tell you the truth, we're thinking of making that journey off, you know, which is probably time I'm through with menopause and all of that, you know. Um, you know, and, and a couple of years ago I had a, a health scare uh, that I was worried that there was cervical cancer and I had to go have stuff removed and have it all checked out. And that was a little bit of a wake up of going, whoa, you know, think of it. Be It's one thing to come home alone. It's another thing to come home alone. And then you have to worry about your health and go to the doctor and get some help. And, you know, all the stuff that a lot of people, you know, I have a friend who's gone through terrible cancer and she has no husband and her kids are all grown and, you know, so that I think that's where I've gotten lately too. Is I, I, I am learning. The more I've shared about my life in the last twenty five years, how uh, in a lot of those ways, in those pains, there are other people that deal with it too. So I think that was kind of exciting. That the focus on this movie was not about our pain, but it was about our choices, and not only about our pain. Uh, and the, you know, the the pain and the the way we live in it, but it's about our victory in Christ. Oh man, what a what a great victory! I I don't think, you know, we've gone through this church culture of skinny jeans and tattooed song leaders, and you know, and it's all cool and hip, and we don't want our songs to be too much about the blood of Jesus because it's just gross and it runs people off, you know. But man, I. I either sound like my mother or my grandmother that is if we're not careful we we forget the cost of christ what he what he did you know visiting the Holy Land is a great reminder. You go to all these sites and you're just amazed, oh wow, Jesus walked right here, and oh, this makes geographical sense, and here's an archaeological find, and you know all those things are great, but when it gets right down to it, you could be standing in Portland. You know what I mean? The fact of the matter is, we if we're not careful, we forget the sacrifice that the king of the earth, of the universe, the king of all kings, what he lowered himself to do for you, simply so that you would have access to the Lord and forgiveness and peace and mercy and all those sweet things that we just got finished talking about. That, oh, look, I'm alone, but man, some, somehow I make it through. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit. So if Christ had not died, all of these good feelings, the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of light. If today you had peace that passed all understanding, that was God. So today your children got home healthy and safe off of a school bus. That was God. The Bible says every good and perfect. Today you saw a sunset that was gorgeous. The butterfly that landed on your porch. The the funny thing that your kid came in and just warmed your heart up. There is no good and perfect emotion of warmth and peace and joy. None of that came out of the clear blue sky. Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. Wow. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shonda, for being on the show and, and for sharing that and for and for doing this. I sure appreciate it. You're welcome for our daily devotional together. <laughs> this is Rick Altizer signing off out of the brain of Shonda Pierce once again. Well, we're out of... Uh, out of Shonda's brain, we're also out of time. And uh, you've been listening to the Rick Altizer Show. And uh, thank you so much, Shonda Pierce, for being on the show. I don't know. This is your third, fourth, fifth time. I don't know how many times you've been on the show. But we're talking about our third movie together. It's called Unashamed. It's going to be in theaters May 7th and May 9th. 
uh, 7 p.m. only. And uh, it's only those two nights for 7 p.m. And you can get tickets and information by going to ShondaMovie.com. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, this is Rick Altizer signing off for my brain now. What, what, what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know that there's much there for it to sign off. Anyway, thanks for joining me. We'll see you next week. Bye. If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. There is the-